Happy Friday, everybody. You're listening to the Entrepreneurial Web. I'm your host, Jeremiah Fox. I'm a little nervous to pull the cord on this one. What do you think? You should, should do it. Be. I'd like to welcome my guest. Some of you probably already know the late, great Bobby Seeger Jr. <laughs> it's done already. It's done already. It's perfect. Nah, we're going to get this started. Uh, we might as well just let iTunes know to mark this one as explicit. Uh, Oh, they fucking it, should. It's going to be a hot one. Uh, that being said, we're going to start with a quote. Uh, <laughs> I get to say the quote, not you. You get the rest of the. You get the rest of the episode. Uh, you you're down with Gary V, right? You listen to Gary V a little v? bit, yes. Yeah, you dig him. You like I him? dig him. I like going to the bathhouse with his uncle, the crazy <laughs> Russian uncle. Sasha. <laughs> Between him and I Slavic, bet. it's Man, a good time. I bet. I bet. So. I, you know, when I saw this quote recently on, on one of his feeds, uh, I immediately thought of you. I'm going to embrace this. He said, if you don't love what you do, fuck that. Yes. You got any feedback on us for that, Bobby? But that's exactly the, what can you give after that? That says it all. It's kind of like your, your mantra, right? You kind of live by that. Without even trying, you know, oh, that's you, you uh, try a little bit. I've seen you. I've seen you work before. Very little bit. Very little bit. But that's your, your basic approach. My basic approach is yeah. along those lines. Yeah. And you only got one shot in life. You got to make it the best. Right. Right. Your comfort comes first. Otherwise, you can't comfort others. <laughs> and I know how much you like to comfort others. <laughs> <laughs> but it is true. That's that's uh, it's crazy. That's the way I've looked at life since I'm probably uh, 20, 21. I'm currently in the 49. Happy 49 <laughs> birthday month. The birthday month. If you guys don't celebrate fucking long. birthdays by the month, you're silly. You're missing out. You're missing That's right. Out big time. Yes. Yeah, celebrate life. So prior to that, mm. prior to like 22, yeah. had, Bobby's got, Bobby's the man of a million stories, at least. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's not enough. Okay. Let's make it a billion. All right. all right. So let's talk about how it all got started. You're from Marine Park, right? Um, yep. Yeah. My parents, my parents had me, uh, Let's see. I recently found a photograph of my parents. I believe they were getting married in April of 1970. Uh, that would make them close to, that would make my father 18, my mom 17, which is something I did not think about. Um, that explains a lot. That explains a <laughs> your, lot. Your childish nature. <laughs> I believe. I could be wrong. It could be like they were receiving communion and somebody took the picture. I could really be wrong. It's it's a soft subject, so I don't I don't bring it up with the the one parent that is alive and uh and then it rolled out in october happened to be the same day as my mom same birthday oh that's crazy i did see that recently on that's a, a post. probably post ups on the world of instagram yeah and then uh speaking of instagram bobby is very very active pretty pretty infamous i know you have three you have I've three. got nine Instagram accounts, and <laughs> I enjoy every one of them. But what your three your three main ones? Are, the ones that creep behind your mom's yeah. is the those are the special ones. What do what are your three? There are three main ones I know of. What uh, which the what three main know? ones that uh, get a lot of bullshit are um, the Bobby Seeger, Bubba and Buster. And, oh right, I forgot and, about that. And I'd say out to lunch, and I'd say that right now because I try to be serious with the Aiden. Instagram. Oh yeah, Jesus, you do have a lot. Uh, the genuine motor works, I dabble in just a little bit, and the Indian Larry one has been hijacked, and I haven't been able to put anything on it or get a straight answer from Instagram. And you when? think you think having a little blue check next to your name would they would fucking when, at when least say get, hey? When did it get hijacked? Uh, about a week ago. Oh really? <clears throat> yeah. And I was yeah. like, there's no new nudie pictures. There's coming nothing. Up on, there's not, like, I couldn't even promote no coming tattoos, out. no half naked women with nothing. flame torches. Like, come on, uh, Bobby. I was like, I'll be recapping this, uh, providing we all make it out of here in one piece. <laughs> uh, whenever that shit gets together, chances with are Instagram. slim. Chances are slim. I got some mats in the slim back for everybody. <laughs> I'm already slim. We got to work on you. Yeah. So you you basically grew up like all the way at the end of Marine Park, right? Like right near the well, uh the pretty much. Bridge. My parents lived in uh Gerritsen Beach. So that's the end. Yeah, yeah. I'd say of that the part end of, of the world. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Coney Island being its own other uh animal. That's it, its own other animal. Yeah. But yeah, so my parents, Brooklyn 
And what, so what was, what was it like? I mean, you, you know, now you're all about, uh, fuck that, I'm going to be happy. What was the, what was the prevailing attitude at the time? At the time? I mean, so, you told me, but everybody wants to know. Uh, nobody wants to know because it's know. fucking not a big deal. Um, what was the attitude at the time? Confusion, young, not knowing what's the next move. It was a crazy place though, right? Um, I don't think crazy really <laughs> would be it. You know, it was all no. right. What about the story you told me a couple of weeks ago about like going to a, you were going to a wedding or something like that. And uh, a wedding, <laughs> I don't know. You were in a deli and a guy came in and like <clears throat> shot somebody's head off. And you were just like, yeah, that was normal. No, no, no. There, there was a guy that got shot in the face, but that was fifth grade. And uh, I was bringing Miss Lighthouse a plant for Easter. Yeah. A little cool. plant. Yeah. And uh, walked by the group of guys that were pallbearers, and one of them didn't make it back to the church yeah. to finish it up. Jesus. But that was pretty neat because that was the first time ever seeing somebody shot in the face. And, and it, you know, it looks like jelly, you know? But anyway, Miss Lighthouse got the. Not a, she got the not, plant. So that was the beginning of your happiness there? <laughs> that was the turning point. That was the turning point of uh, Catholic grammar school. And and you spent a lot of time in uh, Breezy, Breezy Point as well? So Breezy Point is a particularly uh, neat kind of neighborhood. So uh, They do wonderful things with fire. They do wonderful things. They do things. Don't be nervous. It's okay. <laughs> We're not wrestling yet. I'm just dreaming of the donuts that lay next to me. Are <laughs> you, you kidding? Eat, you I only on had a show. bagel. I only you had a bagel on, on my way. Don't worry about it. I had about eight espressos. Out to lunch with Bobby Seeger is one of his main Instagram handles. It's all for fun. And you know, active. I'll tell I you mean, what. Active. This guy eats like five lunches a day. I just like to eat. I mean, we couldn't tell. Shit. There's That's nothing wrong with it. Look at that. You're going to need that. I'm, I'm turning the room around. Anyway, I brought these as a, a small thing because I figured how many people bring things. But then again, who, who cares about what other people? What do we got here? Is that peeping tom donuts? Is that what that says? That's a, that's why they're in the pink bag. These are cute. These so are good. So you um, you spent some time at Breezy Point, and then you ended up uh, upstate a little bit. So Breezy Point was good. Breezy Point was um, and is still a nice little community. This is loud, right? Opening this shit. No, no, it's fine. I know she's like that motherfucker. Why did he? Br she bring. Oh, come on. What's up? She. Well, she was like, "Why are you not opening that?" Basket? She's like, "Let's go, <laughs> motherfucker." And you didn't bring coffee. I'm like, man. If there wasn't a time constraint, I would have brought everybody whatever they wanted. But yeah, so um, Breezy Point was a summer summertime operation, and that summertime operation was due to my grandfather, my mother's father. And he was a particular kind of character, work machine, very little humor, kind of dry. Kind of like you. Kind of like, like I'm like, kind of like him, kind of. Um, but yeah, Breezy Point was for all the grandchildren. It didn't work out to be all the grandchildren. Because I'm good. I like my hello. figure. Thank Excuse you. me, miss. Oh, can't talk. Shit. She don't want to talk. Do you like one of these? Because honestly, come on. How Sam's can you pass these up? Sam's like, oh. Finally. Yeah, bring it. <laughs> As you should. Yes. Yeah. This is you might take the box. You this know. is Bobby's outreach program. He shows up to every pissed off customer mm. with donuts. I don't have enough money to, to comfort them. We'll talk about what you do for customers right. later. Uh, yeah, so Breezy Point was great. Um, you know, I was like, no different. Listen, growing up, I'm no different than most kids. You know, it was a lot of baseball. Um, no basketball for me. Swimming, you know, in the little Catholic school, we were on a swimming team, baseball, you know, the basics. Um, angel dust. <laughs> so the angel dust wasn't until I was 16. But, hey, I like to party. And Which is a, a common hashtag. <laughs> Yo, and I like to party. It's all just you meant to be fun and games. I know, I know. It's all fun and games. And then, and then you ended up upstate because uh, you got into like a specialized, gifted and talented. Uh, That's school. correct. That <laughs> is correct. My mom felt I'd advance, and so did the Catholic school. <laughs> if I moved in with my father, my parents they were divorced. You know, you know. Looking back on it, you see most people that got married young or right out of high school. Um. You know, yeah. it doesn't work out. Yeah, my parents, same right. way. they were yeah. like 21, 22, 
right. was born right away. They were in college. Mom didn't finish for like 10 years. Right. Divorce. Same. Yeah. Another story. Same story. Yeah. Same too story. Young. Everybody too young. Back too then. young. Yeah. So the move upstate and, uh, you know, I thought it would be pretty good. You know, what do, what do you know right before being 16? That uh, Everything. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't pretty good. <laughs> and then uh, at what point did you get into get into bikes? I mean, I saw a picture you posted with your dad and you on a bike. Your dad's a biker, too. So well, my dad, you, got you into, know. You got into just Folsom is where you like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to say I'm no jail, you know. No jail, no, no, a bunch of things. Not yet. There's time because I mean, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm only 49. Gary V says that all the time, too. <laughs> you have so much and it's time. True. Yeah, it's yeah. true. You have there's you have so much time in the day. As long recently, as you're recently, up, <laughs> you know, oh. almost. So, so how did the how did the bike thing start? We haven't even, hmm. we haven't even talked about the fact that you own any of Larry motorcycles yet, but that's just one. It's pretty small neat. Small. It's pretty neat. Component. So I've always, always liked motorcycles. It wasn't like I grew up with money. Excuse me. It wasn't like I had, um, you know, my dad was a, a millwright working on mm-hmm. conveyors, turbines, yeah. stuff like that. And so it was not a lot of money. My mom was a waitress. Um, friends we both had gotten remarried. I have two sisters. Um, you know, so there was no, like, I grew up with dirt bikes. You'd think upstate. Only a handful of guys I knew had them. And, um, I mean, I wanted one. I had a cousin. He had Harleys. Um, very smart kind of cousin. Smart in certain ways. And he was in a bike club. It wasn't the greatest thing because he was in a bike club young, kind of like having a kid young. Yeah. Um, that didn't work out for him. Um, I did like that. I liked it, you know, from the age, I'd say, of 12 on. The, the level of excitement with the mm-hmm. motorcycles, the bike clubs, all yeah. that. But seeing the issues that this guy had, my cousin, um, I just thought, why would I want to be in a bike club? He was a little older. He was uh, a few years older. Mm-hmm. I don't know, seven years, six, seven years. So, like, that just rolled into, uh, you know, I partied. I loved to party. I got out of high school. My dad gave me the ultimatum. Let me just say that from fifth grade to getting out of high school, uh, I went to summer school. So I did school year every, round. Every year? Every year. I didn't fuck around, man. If you're going to do it, you might as well really do That's it. That's where all the brains came from. Uh, well, you know. Got that specialized That's one-on-one. Just special. Education. Special is good. <laughs> just just that, throw that title in, it, which is a good one. But anyway, so like I eventually got a motorcycle in my 20s. and So you were a girl when, when you got into bikes for the most part. For the most part, Yeah. All right, cool. I chose to travel a lot. That was the option. Like, I got a little bit of money. Maybe I should jump to uh, travel. Unlike, you know, say some family that never left the yeah. East Coast, right. or maybe right. they went to Florida. No, I wanted to go backpacking through Europe. So I did stuff like that. Gotcha. Of course, I had stopped partying and doing things like that. And before Europe? Before Europe. That doesn't make sense. I know. Right, now we're going to let back. Bobby finish his donut and maybe start another one. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back with you in just a few minutes. You're listening to the Entrepreneurial Web. <laughs> 